been a little while since I've heard that song. You gotta get into it. Welcome back to the desk. I forgot what I was supposed to say <laughs> when I came through. I was so distracted by the song. Sanguine Nation of Power, the two teams we have going up against each other right now. Last set of the day, and much like what we saw in Europe earlier, we had three and four. We had one and two. Now we have three and four. We're going into one and two. Yes. Kresnik's going to join me on the desk. You've learned... Well, actually, I guess we haven't truly learned at the essence if you were the problem for Bork. I mean, you were only there for week one, so I, I footage would wager two. that you probably weren't. I might have played week two. Maybe. I don't remember. I Even actually still, don't remember. It's been more weeks without than with. Yes. So you can't mathematically have been the problem. I'm sure some, there's someone on a calculator who could prove that I was somehow. Math is weird. Math is weird. Math, that's that's probably the truest thing I've heard all day. Math is weird. The numbers today have been ridiculous. The numbers I'm about to throw at you right now are going to be important as well. Sanguine, Nation Power, both 6 and 1. I believe there is some map differences between them, though. Especially considering, Small I think map. it was, again, last, last week, actually, the Nation of Power won over Bork, but they did lose a single map. So things like that do change the way things are going. But we're going to be kind of jumping into... I want to say the front lines here right now, looking at someone like Jalen Sanity, who has been very prominent in this scene for a long time and admittedly will make a big difference in games. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, he's a, he, he was, with him a, once. I was literally on about to say that on Sanguine Esports. Uh, Jalen, <laughs> Jalen was a long-term teammate of mine and he is a very, very super flexible player. Um, funny to say that when he's probably going to be playing a Nara Barrick the majority of the <laughs> set, but uh, he's just... He's a very strong player. I mean, he's gone from being a really solid DPS to being a, an amazing support to being a really, really solid tank. And he's just shown he can he can go across roles, across everything, and just always perform. And this is actually what comes to my mind right now when I'm thinking about him. His Inara has always been there in my mind, but the Fernando that he's been playing as of late has been very good for Sanguine. Between him and Flame kind of bouncing that and juggling that between each other, it's been a pick that... Admittedly, and I would say like Fernando in my mind still hasn't kind of broken that tier overall, but it plays the role exactly like you would yeah. want out of a front line. I feel like he is at this point kind of like where Inara is probably the perfect front line. He's like, this is what you would want. You got a shield, you got an ult that stops you from dying, you've got some damage, and you have the ability to get in or get out depending on how you want to do. He's kind of got the average. Yeah, I definitely think Nando is underrated. Uh, that And a player who might also actually be playing Nando would be Tay, Tay for Nation of Power. Nation of Power. Uh, he's also another strong tank that has really gotten his footing, I think, with this team. Uh, he's he's always been around. I believe his previous alias, uh, I I believe he was Party Animal before, playing on a uh, team. Well, that doesn't help me at all. I didn't know that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, playing on a team with a player that I know who also is on Team Zenith called Jostles. Uh, he oh, was yeah. playing with them before. Uh, but he's been around for a while, and this has kind of been his breakout his breakout team, I would say. And admittedly, it's been phenomenal to me, mm -hmm. being able to see what Tay has done. Obviously, Makoa looks good on most people, but playing the kind of aggro front line, your flex player, like if they have to switch to you know a triple DPS at any point, you're, you can expect Tay to kind of pick that up. But he's got the play style down. He knows exactly where he needs to be. Didn't quite get the hook he was looking for in that highlight. I've seen that before, and I was still scared for him. But either way, has been a phenomenal player. Khan has been very important for this team, though. I'm curious to see what they do with Atlas if it comes in. Of course, we can look at the map. Warders Gate, Fish Market Band out right there from Sanguine. And you're going to have Jaguar Falls, Stone Keep on the other side, where we're going to Bright Marsh. So overall, would you say maybe mm -hmm. Atlas really, really good? I mean, I th Atlas is really good in general. On Bright, he's really solid with the Deja Vu. You you could run him with the Temporal Divide, but I think you definitely would find more out of Deja Vu on this map. Uh, standard tank ban so far. Sanguine banning. Oh, God, I feel like I'm talking about my own team. Because <laughs> I, 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 I was on Sanguine for, like, you know, for the LAN going okay, into this. So now, I'm well, like, okay. Sanguine banning Khan and Ash. Don't know why I was doing that. But Inner, inner <laughs> Coach comms right here. You're Sanguine yeah. right now. What are you grabbing? Uh, I, I, probably, I, I mean, I don't get anything away on my team, but I mean... This map, you could do Atlas, you could do Genos. Um, Imani also, depending on how high priority the PML has been putting it, uh, clearly has been was really, really strong yeah. in the Borg Zenith set. Uh, so depending, but they they go with the Atlas with the double off tank ban, triple with Nicola. Uh, it does have a lot. Of it does wild. bring a lot to the table that you might lack. A lot of weight. Khan Ash being banned out to me, and I mean we were talking about Tay earlier. That that is get rid of Tay as much as possible. Ban those two. Grab the Atlas. Try to make him feel uncomfortable. Unfortunately for you, the two best point tanks, and admittedly one can play as an off tank, just got taken away. And Nara Barrick picked up here for Jay and Tay. 
Lynch. I love that, ten, that name combo. It's, it's perfect. pretty good. Jay probably on the Inara, Tay probably on the Barrack. And that's the the glory of this is because Here's the way Primarch is played, you kind of juggle around who's going to actually stand on the objective. Yeah, Sanguine, uh, Sanguine grabbing Damba to deny the stronger healer from the Inara Barrack composition and uh, yeah. grabbing BK for Neo. I'm assuming. Yeah, trying to, probably. I mean, Neo was a player that literally, I mean, when I was on a team with him, again, I have a lot of experience in this matchup, yeah. actually. This is great. Uh, Neo, a player that I was on a team with him, people would just would just ban BK. It literally didn't, the map didn't matter. The No context mattered. They would just start with, like, all right, ban BK color. What do you want? <laughs> ban like, BK. It was just, like, almost every single map. So it's a kind of play under the assumption that you're not going to have the two that you want the most, unfortunately, for him. Mani and Ying picked up. And Ying's the one that catches my eye. That's twice today I think I've seen Ying. And me. she's one of those supports I've seen in IP. Like, Bird specifically has run her, but not a lot of teams have really been digging deep into that that portion. It's usually the Genos, the Maldamba. So what does Ying bring over here that you're going to see a she's, little more? She's like Damba 2. Damba, Damba she's two. Damba, Damba the sequel. Maybe not. It may, might not be better, but it's different. But <laughs> it's different. And just like Sharknado 2. Yeah, exactly. Which was, for some reason, the first sequel that came to my mind. Yeah, yeah. she just has, brings a lot of extra healing that you're missing with, you know, yeah. Genos not being on the field. Well, Eevee comes out. Ying is locked in. Amani is there. Nation of Power looked pretty solid. But Sanguine got the Atlas. Let's jump down to the casters and see how they feel about this. How do we feel about this? Oh, I feel wait, like no, that's I like one of those that. old like patty cake games you play when you're a kid. Du, 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 du. Isn't that a isn't that a dance in Greece? I don't know. You know you who used to do movie? Gabby used to be really good at that. Like that she used to do that thing. stuff a lot on, <laughs> on the cast and Gore would just be it. like, I don't know what to do with my hands. <laughs> <laughs> she was no, a professional just, hand dancer. I don't know if for those of you that know that about a hand model. I could be a hand model. You could be a hand model, Mick. Dude, have you ever seen a clip of like? She's got to be the most famous hand model in the world. Cause yeah, and she wears like and velvet gloves weird. over her hands. And, like she has somebody follow her around and press like the <laughs> elevator buttons for yeah. her and stuff. It's whack, dude. <laughs> it's real whack. Bright Marsh is where we're headed. I have to correct myself. Sorry, Bork players and Bork fans. Not back-to-back -back wins for them. They found the win this week, but last week Nation of Power and Sanguine both won. One of those coming off of Bork, unfortunately. Now we got two more first slash second place teams here fighting for the lead here on Bright Marsh. You get Stigma on the Eevee, Poison on the Imani. Neo gets his Bomb King though. Yeah. It's going to be a contested one, Nick. Definitely is. Depending on uh, Poison's Imani, Flame Effects. Flame Effects is Atlas, excuse me. That Those are two big uh, kind of question marks. We always have to see, like, watch and figure out, you know, how do these players respond to these two new, very viable, strong, ban-worthy at times characters. But then you've got guys like Niu on his Bomb King. You've got guys like Edgem on his cast. You have incredibly comfortable power picks elsewhere on this draft that I am still leaning a little bit towards Sanguine. Unfortunately for that notion, they are not the ones on the point right now with a little bit of a wrap around here. Neo helps find, and not first blood just yet, Stigma's going to be the one who actually gets killed off here. 63% for Nation of Power, but Sanguine are answering back with a few kills of their own here. That's a good divide to block off a lot of the damage. He could get in and burst it. Poison's going to be the one who falls. Flame Effect's going to be the one with a double kill to start things off here for Sanguine and they've retaken the point. I'm pretty sure that Temporal Divide actually caught a Frost Bomb, which could have been yeah. catastrophic had that connected on a Niu and Flame Effects. The flip-flop on the objective here. Eevee definitely in line to grab a touch. Stigma on Eevee is definitely something worth talking about. We haven't had really the chance to much. Yeah. He's been such a like big hit scan player right. recently. <laughs> it's it's kind of weird to see him on Eevee at this point. We talk about his snipers a lot, but in this case, he's going to be the one playing the blaster. All three kills from different players of Sanguine here, and that's going to be all they need. This one's going to go through here just momentarily. The Imani's back at base. Nation of Power, they get clean swept after jumping onto the point to start things off. And Sanguine answer back in a big way. Very methodical, I think, there uh, of, a, of a mid fight. I like the way Kresnik calls it. It's a mid fight, kind of a mid point fight. Uh, very methodical there from Sanguine. And uh, after a very slow start from them, Nick, they actually ended up looking pretty good. And to continue this conversation about Stigma and Eevee, traditionally it would be Poison playing the Eevee. Yeah, and true. so now I'm questioning, well, did Stigma not feel good about Amani? Did he not like Amani? Did right. Poison just like feel really like overwhelmingly positive about it? Like, 
because that's a disruption to their ecosystem in a lot of ways, whereas, like, you look over at Sanguine, Atlas has flawlessly worked into their composition, and then they get power picks elsewhere in the draft, and everybody feels apparently pretty oh. good about the situation. That was nearly very unfortunate timing there. Edgem does end up getting cleaned up. Atlas uses his ultimate there, pauses out a few people from playing in the game just for a moment there. Minute and a half left. This is usually where the payload stalls out anyway. That's a really good point to bring up, is that, I mean, Stigma, he's, he's playing just fine on the EV up to this point, but it's really the loss of having poison on the EV. That's the big difference maker. I think in my eyes on this one, uh, they, they've looked okay so far up to this point. Unfortunately, Sanguine has just had so much of a presence and, and, and so much pressure in the face of Nation of Power. They haven't really had the chance to get comfortable here. Here's some ultimates starting to fly. The Dome Shield's going to answer back the Dread Serpent. No kills just as of yet. Neo's just hanging back, pouring out damage on this Bomb King, but he's got to keep himself safe here. Getting up in his face is Jay. He's going to be the one to clean up the first kill in this fight. It's almost like things stall out just after one. Tough wall to break here, certainly. I'd like to see a nice temporal divide. Use one of these at an angle. One of the cool things about it is it, it goes so far to the left and the right. Depending on where you're looking with Atlas, that is going to, you know, slice the pie in a completely different way, so to speak. So Flame FX, I think it's one of the strongest non-ultimate cooldowns in the game. He needs to use this appropriately to cut off some lines of sight for the defense and try and get the offense into a better position. Like, not always just dropping it directly in front of you across. I think a little bit of an angle, a little 45, 50 degree turn, it couldn't hurt. Well, that certainly would help your team be able to move forward a little bit. Some of the divides have been good up to this point, buying some value, getting the worst for wear end of that trade here with the barrack. Poison, though, he's going to want, he's going to be the one, excuse me, to open up this fight. Now Stigma's getting aggressive. He's flying in their face, finds a couple blast shots, but does not find any kills. Just going toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Fernando here. Blasting him from behind, blinking in and out. He actually looks pretty good, I would say, on this Eevee. That was kind of our question mark. Jalen Sanity gets stunned up. He gets sent back to base. That's a one kill defense here for Nation of Power. And Sanguine, they just could not break that middle ground. Nope, not a lot of uh, aggressive ultimates popped either. Sanguine, maybe not feeling good about that to start. They're a little bit limited in some capacity on, on their ultimate. I haven't seen a ton of great exiles, period. I don't think that's one of the things people have quite figured out about Atlas. I think as it, as it goes on, seeing uh, Exile to set things up, to make things easier, to coordinate dives, that is a, a very uh, unlocked box, if you will, in, in the kit still for me. It's, you almost right. never talk about it. You could go a game or a set without even talking about Exile, and it's like, that's the champion's ultimate. Two. That's, that's entirely <laughs> fair. I mean, the rest we, of the kit's so damn good. I mean, we, it, we, we've seen some good ones, I think. I mean, where. But it, the problem is it's not necessarily flashy in the sense that, I mean, it just takes somebody out of the game for, for you know, a few seconds, which, which shouldn't be understated. It's a very strong utility, uh, but, but the flashy plays are a little bit harder to come by in this case. It's a pretty good temporal divide. It's going to extend all the way around the fight, actually maybe blocking his team from being able to re-engage on a pretty decent Dread Serpent that time. Uh, so the temporal divide, although... Big and wide sometimes is not always in your team's favor. Stigma now getting aggressive, not utilizing the verticality of the EV just yet. Ooh, that's a pretty good King Bomb here. It's going to roll through. It's going to find a couple of stuns. The Immortal's going to come out to buy just a little bit more damage here in this team fight. Wow. Sanguine, they're investing a lot. The Temporal Divide again. It's going to block off some return damage, but maybe block off some damage in the enemy team. There it is. There's so much coming through. Both rocket boots were burned. That Barrett got completely out of dodge and actually comes and back gets to a kill. haunt them. Flame Effects takes a seat there, Tay. Trying to figure out where this Bomb King's coming from. It's up high. Niu gets a nice little frag there for himself. But now he's getting pushed by two. This is rough. It is rough. Gets the butt end of that one. Trades out his life for one. There's going to be the Ice Storm. It's going to buy some damage now onto Jalen Sanity. And a double kill for Stigma's Eevee. It's going to open the door to potentially a team fight, a point fight win here for Sanguine. But nobody's, or Nation of Power rather, nobody was on the point there. Maybe losing just a little bit of time that could have pushed things through here. 87%, both teams very close, both teams definitely with a chance still. Highly contested game up to this point, as we expected though, Nick. But Nation of Power, they find the second point. Another Ying ultimate as well, so much healing in the early game, that's going to be pretty difficult to deal with. 
tables have turned here. No comeback mechanics, no funny business, just a better f a point fight from Nation of Power. It's interesting, though, in that both teams, I mean, it's hard to say. I mean, none of those team fights were really like huge explosive team fights. There were a lot of ultimates flying out left and right, but there was whether there wasn't follow-up or whether they didn't get as much value as maybe they had hoped. Oh, they definitely did. I mean, when you look at what did they invest in that barrack? Like, the King Bomb went out under the Dome show, they just couldn't get it done. Like, uh, that was a lot of investment. They popped Immortal on that side of the fight as well, and it, it literally got nothing. Tay Red. straight up lived by himself, no real peel except his own Dome Shield. He gets out, comes back into that side of the fight on the apartments, and just gets the kill onto the Atlas. Like, that was just a big, big flop from the Sanguine fight. The, the fight in general didn't really end up happening. Just a, just a couple kills for either side. But Nation of Power, they had the zone. They had the location marked out on the map to find themselves point fight. And point number two here, they're going to look and hopefully get things pushed through. Stigma and Poison are going to provide kill. a nice one, too. The, the rare fire kill, yeah. as you say, coming out here. We, we've seen that a little Lillard bit. Lillard from half court. <laughs> Sorry. Bang! 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 <laughs> <laughs> Down comes the three. Down comes the fire bomb to clean up a kill here. Rounding the corner, though, things could go sideways here for Sanguine. But they have some ultimates. They're going to use the Immortal to try to stall things out. The Nation of Power is still advancing. That's a great stasis field there. Blocking out a ton of damage coming in from Nation of Power. And keeping Fernando safe, it's one of the really like good answers, I think, to Frost Bomb, to Seismic Crash, things like that. Because it's something you can put down preemptively. Once you you sort of know that Dread Serpent's coming through the air, or you see the wind-up for the Seismic Crash, you can get in position, drop down the Stasis Field to make sure everybody in your team stays safe and, and can't be fragged out during those crowd control ultimates. Seen, seen some good and some bad out of the ability up to this point. The, the, always, the question that I always raise is how much you're willing to invest. The Dome Shield's going to be the one. The King Bomb's going to be the other on the opposite side. Buys the stun, but doesn't buy any damage. The Dome Shield's going to see to that. But lots of grouped up members right now of Nation of Power. He gets blinked in on. Doesn't really catch too much damage in return here. Ultimate starting to fly back for either side. The Illusory Rift is going to top off the red health bars now at the moment. But no team is able to find any kills over time is ticking away now. Nation of Power have to stay on the point, but Sanguine, it looks like they're able to push forward, Nick. There it is, soaring and looking for a frag, if they can get it. Overtime starting to expire quicker and quicker. Two for one in favor of the defense here, and the defense will hold. A little impulse shot goes in from Edgem as well. It's been a little bit quiet here, but we've been watching some other flashier characters. He's still top damage, still neck and neck with Neo. Playing it well, here's the, uh, the fire. It goes back to ice as I say it. Ice bomb goes a yeeting, comes up with a nice root, finds a kill as well. And, and there's back the, to fire. Back to fire stance. Nice. Nice. Point spawning. In there is an opportunity seconds. there. Obviously, like one of the the cooler things we t we broke down the clear casting passive mechanic for Imani earlier on, and, and it's right. either stance is just a free auto attack, and obviously. Five. When you look at what fire stance Three, Ottawa's are, two, they're these long charging, I believe, 1.1 second uh, duration charge. Mm -hmm. So you're just getting more out of a free fire auto attack, and you could potentially burst someone out. You come around the corner with your clear casting stacked up, fully charged fire auto, and then fire off the fire free one quickly as well. That's like 2,000 plus burst damage. Nobody else can really do it like Amani, but it takes a lot of preparation and a lot of things have to line up. The Dragon doesn't maybe get as much value as they were hoping for in this case. The Temporal Divide did a good job of keeping the damage on the opposite side. Seemingly, if you didn't use your ultimate in that last payload push fight, uh, you, you used it in this one. The Immortal now back and charged, as well as the Ice Storm. Sanguine, no, they're the ones pushed furthest forward. Temporal Divide's going to cut this fight in half, but Stigma sees through it. Cleans up Edgem, and now they have a small advantage here. They could go on the front foot. Poison, though, he's going to be the second one to find a kill. Are oh, the rest of the kills going to follow, though? There it is. Shield goes up. Nice little moonwalk dash away. Jalen Sanity gets everybody out with the Immortal. 90%. 42. Two people rooted out. Two front lines, that is. So Evie not over enthralled about pushing those two down. Temple Divide comes out. That's a pretty good one from Flame Effects. It's going to force the out rotation from Imani. It's been such a like a war of attrition. One team pushes all the way through, gets on the point. The other team then answers back, pushes back on the opposite side. We're going to have to see how this team fight goes, though. It's going to come down to this final one. The King Bomb's not goes fishing. Doesn't find maybe the target that he was looking for. Maybe trying to find Stigma, who's able to blink out of it. 
at this point. We're getting so close and down to it. Neo, though, he comes out of the King Bomb. He finds a double kill now. Edgem, he has one in this fight as well. And all the kills are coming up blue. And the point number three is going to be going that direction as well. I want to uh, take a quick switch over to Imani and take a peek at her loadout, see the things that she's running, because she has flipped back and forth. Uh, between fire and ice in this case. Is there wow. anything that stands out to you there, Nick? Yeah, I mean, Elemental Shift reduced the cooldown of Frost Bomb and Inferno Cannon, uh, and obviously reducing the cooldown of Elemental Shift. This is a loadout that we do not see a lot of. Yeah. Basically, everyone has run at least level 4, most of the time level 5 Frostfire Glide Speed, as well as right. level 5 HP, just to, because l the character is, is so much of what you see on screen. It's just auto-attacking and Frost Stance, a little bit of Frost Bomb action when it's up, this loadout is around switching the stances when you can. I, the only yeah. reason I think he's going from fire to frost is not because he loves the fire auto attacks, but I think it's just to get that frost bomb cooldown up as much as possible. Does that change the, the overall play style? I mean, obviously it changes the intricacies of the kit, but do you play Imani wholly different as far as it's a little bit less aggression and not necessarily i think it it is just to get more frost bomb cooldowns up right. you're still playing basically the same but you just love frost bomb you want to play around frost bomb more and that's the way you've built this loadout it's going to be an even stronger style loadout in the next patch when uh the elemental shift sees a th two seconds or three second reduced cool i think it's going from i want to say 10 to 8 in the next patch, yeah. so with that card, you'll be able to get your stance switch down to a three-second cooldown. Being able to leverage, I mean, there's a lot of interesting stuff, and this is something I've been personally pushing for since Imani came out. I'm like, she's a stance switcher who can't change stances very <laughs> right. often. I'm like, you, you don't get to do it that often. The stances are a little bit imbalanced in, in a lot of ways. But you have a lot of cool loadout cards, like things that work with your cooldowns, things that give you health. That type of stuff that makes the stance switch all the more a desirable mechanic to want to do more often. So I'm very glad that this change for Imani is coming. It's going to be exciting to see. I mean, she's had a huge impact so far, really just utilizing the one. A little bit of a stance switch loadout coming in this one here for us. Getting to see Poison flex his muscles on the Imani for the first time. The Dragon's going to hopefully add a defense onto the scoreboard here for Nation of Power. It's going to be burning away now. Lots of damage. Wow. Maybe that's all they were looking for, but gets burned back on the opposite side. Sanguine electing to hold down. That could be a big root. Nearly makes its way in the doorway, and it does. Here comes the King Bomb. Your half-health Bomb King, though. How much do you want to fight off here? Finds the stun, finds some damage, and finds a kill here. And the kills are now starting to fly back and forth. That's a good seismic crash. Gets Neo out of this team fight. T-Mac just healing away from the top rope here and adding a kill for good measure. But Neo, he's still alive. The Bomb King is still firing out damage from down low. And he's able to wrap around the backside. There's no pressure in on him. He's going to poppy bomb himself out. Stall things out for the moment. Still a little bit of time for Sanguine to get in here. But Nation of Power holds firm. I'm going to take a quick peek at the items here. What level of cauterize are they yeah. working with? Because they really struggled. And he's the only one with cot three, but they struggled to get through Jay's health for sure. Good job between him and T-Max to keep things locked down. Quick resilience, bouncing back. Stigma not really too worried about the fear at this stage of the game. Neo finds the first frag of the engagement. Oh, but Poison, he answers back. Unfortunately, oh, no! no! He ice walls himself off the map. Down he goes. That's pretty unfortunate. That's a big loss now for the side of Nation of Power. Sanguine in a good spot to push this one through, but they're not able to kill the Inara quick enough yet again. The Stasis Field's going to split this fight in a little bit of half. Nearly going down there is the healer right now. Things are so tense right now. Balancing on a knife edge. One team loses nice. this one in a big way. Edgem's going to start to roll now on the Cassie. He's been quiet, but Poison, he's just hanging out up top. He finds the damage reversal, and Sanguine look like they're going to be held off here unless the touches come back through. Yeah, Sanguine aren't doing a good job at, at chunking through these frontliners. Or maybe you could, you could swing it a more positive light. These frontliners are doing an incredible job staying alive. Uh, between between Jay and Tay, it's incredible how long they were able to last. T-Mac's doing a great job healing from the top rope. And that's just the way Bright Marsh is. If you, if you let a team get their, or a defense, excuse me, get their feet under them, Look at this base. They've got two pillars to hide behind. Perfect, High ground ball. for days. Niu makes a hot rotation to get up there, but he was the only one with caught three yep. in that round, I believe. That's going to be a bit of a different fight now with all, both frontliners having caught three. These frontliners won't have quite the staying power that they used to. Look at all the bulldozers. Dear God, three bulldozer yeah, threes and a bulldozer two. No wonder this dragon three, hasn't been able to do two, anything. The dragon one. basically getting deleted off the map up to this point. Uh, poison... Added a little damage into that last team fight, but uh, that was about all he could do with the limited amount of time 
Lots of aggression now from Nation of Power. Neo gets pushed way back. Find some damage, but that's about it in this one. Jay gets canceled out of the seismic crash. The cooldown's going to get reset, though, so he's still going to have 100% uh, charge when he comes back into this one. Yet again, the dragon goes down almost immediately here, but it's Sanguine. They're the ones who have flipped it on its head, and they're the ones that are now on the point here, tied at three. They just bit off more than they could chew. They went all Good in for bomb. Neo. The movement speed wasn't enough. They couldn't catch up to the Bomb King in time. He gets to disengage, and when you bite off more than you can chew like that, yeah. Everybody's overextended. Nobody's in a good spot. Everybody tries to retreat, gets blown up. Great Immortal as well from Sanguine to keep them alive. And in this one, 90% on the objective. Touch is not nope. going to come through. Would have been Stigma. Bombs. Yeah, but baby. Would have been Stigma. He got blown up just before he was able to get in there and get a touch. And Sanguine, they, they answered back in a big way here. I think Nation of Power looked like they were on the front foot. But saying when they're able to find win number one here in our fourth set of the day, let's send it back to Goran Kresnik to break it down. Well, Sanguine come through, although I will admit I would have loved to see the stance switching Amani come through and win, which, I mean, was kind of the thing that caught our eyes. We were watching and we're like, that seems like, like an really awfully low cooldown cool yeah, for that's the a lot of switching. That's a lot of swapping that he's doing, a lot more than other people, and mm -hmm. I, I get the concept behind it, right? Yeah. I, at first, I was just like, he's, is he just having fun? Like, is that just the whole point of Might fire well. stance? But once he, uh, once he picked up the... Once I noticed he had the Frost Bomb cooldown reduction card, that's like, yeah. oh, so he's just getting a 10 second Frost Bomb cooldown. And Inferno Cannon if he wanted yeah. to use it. And if you, I mean, flick to one Inferno Cannon, flick back to the other in the five seconds you have left, then yeah. all of a sudden both of them are going to be nice and low. You can switch around. Fortunately, didn't quite win, but as the casters mentioned, it's going to be getting, I guess, a buff for the next update. Yeah. So. Potential to see that a little bit more, maybe seeing some glimpses of things for the future. But it was Sanguine that walked away with the victory. Of course, Neo on the Bomb King looked good, but Edgem on Cassie, which is probably, probably just one of his staples at this point, yeah. made it look really good. And the thing that caught me off guard, and I think caught you off guard, I think caught the casters off guard, might have caught him off guard, Stigma was playing Eevee that game. And I feel like Edgem was able to kind of read him a lot. Yeah, Stigma definitely, I mean, I have not seen Stigma play very much EV. To me, he's like the quintessential hit scan player. Yeah. You know, when I think Stigma, I think the Cassie, Shaw, I mean, they're not hit scan, but it, it's in that same you know, yeah, umbrella. Yeah, that, that van. Yeah, I think of the Kinesa, I think of Leon, and seeing him on EV was kind of surprising. To me, it just seems like they, he probably just hasn't, maybe hasn't practiced much Imani. Yeah. Knew they needed to play it, so they decided to put him on it. I mean, he wasn't performing poorly, like right there, right oh, yeah. before he died there. He had a 12th streak. Just the, the, the minor little things like ice block timing, uh, and that's not referring to the one time he fell off the map. Uh, some of the ice block timings, some different <laughs> cooldown usage like that, were uh, I think were like a little off sometimes. Yeah, and a lot of that, especially with Eevee, we've mentioned in the past, but she's very kind of rhythm based. Like you need your cooldowns, you need to kind of understand the ebb and flow. And once you get in the zone, you're in the zone. So. Bright Marsh going the way. Took a little while to get there. 4 3. It took, like, I think it was about a 20 minute game for that one to close out. But now we're going to Serpent Beach. And this is honestly where I think between these two teams, this could very much be a five game 20 minute, 20 minute, 20 minute, 20 minute, 20 minute, yeah. 4 threes all the way through. But this is where, if you want to kind of solidify yourself, and specifically I think Sanguine here, because they're the ones coming in, kind of, I, I believe, is the number one seed overall. They're the ones that I want to see maybe clap down and start. Like, if you're going to win, win hard. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Uh, start of the bands, fairly standard. I mean, Inara band, uh, that's like, there's like always one flex band yeah. kind of in the start. And Inara not, isn't too surprising there. I wouldn't be shocked even if they first picked the barrack after an Inara band. Tor so much knowledge hidden. Torvald's also a choice, too. Torvald is available. To he's going to come through. I did that earlier and it freaked Nick out, but the camera wasn't on me and... I think I did it better than I did there. So, you know, both of those come together. I, I did actually have no clue if that was, like, the game echoing. I'm going to be honest. I was like, that makes me happy. You call, you call me for All that time practicing an old man voice. I think about how many times voice. you actually get to hear it. After a few good yeah, right? not very often. Don't, yeah, consider way. he's, you know, what? I would, at this point, wager 95 or higher percent band. He did get unpick on band oh, in that set earlier, yeah. which isn't surprising. That map is wide. That's the thing. That map is wide. You can yeah. put distance between you and them. It's not too surprising. I'll take these excuses as something that's real. I just wrote Jinzo instead of Genos <laughs> as it Genzo. comes through. But now you have Torvald, damage amp number one. Yes. You have Genos, damage amp number two. Imani, who, well, damage vomiter. Person who doesn't need a damage amp number yeah. one. So oh this is looking really solid it's overall for Nation of Power in terms of how much output they're going to have. Mm -hmm. Also, uh, start from Sanguine, Barrick again taking the last remaining point tank. 
And uh, Bomb King, again, I, a comfort Come pick on, for Neo, I would say, assuming from my previous experience with uh, the, some of the players on that team. Mm -hmm. Just wanting to keep that from them. Also denying it from the Torvald combo, because Torvald BK is is really, really solid. Yeah, it's probably darkness. one of the scary things. And they go for the Injoxus, which has caught a couple people off guard. And in this one, I, there's not an, an initial, oh man, he's here to counter blank. It's yeah. just, no, it's Andro it's with a bubble with a Genos on me. Servant Beach. All of those things sound really good to me, so it doesn't really change too much. Also, it's probably Stigma's most comfortable vertical flanker. True. You know, it's the hit scan one, right? The I mean, I mean, buff, yeah, banners, but run. not really. You can buff say buff if you can like do it in IP right now for some reason where they like to play. European players in the last few weeks have been going for buck. They just like covering. This is the the classic buck. I thought they just like threatening people. No, no. I mean, they, they, they might do that too. Bunker did, Bunker did <laughs> ask me if I was ready to get destroyed at breakfast uh, yeah. the day well, before the match. Yes, there you go. That's how you start your day. That's how you go 7-0 and in, in the PPL. Is insult your opponents during breakfast. Either way, it's Serpent Beach. And Mani and Androxus have more damage amp than any champions deserve to have. So Nation of Power looking like they might have a leg up. The, the two-step plan for PPL success. One, eat your Wheaties. Two, make Kresnik feel bad immediately as your day begins. And, well, I mean, it's worked out for NIP so far. So I think... Kresnik may have a few more breakfast table insults coming his direction if they want to replicate the success of NIP. Just kidding. We love Kresnik. Nobody say a word. But do eat your Wheaties. That is important. The breakfast of champions here. NIP working in the salads a little bit today in the break room and uh, in the studio. Love having these guys around for sure. Bro Frostbomb coming from a Ooh. long way away. Does get the root onto the king. Nice resets here. Stigma. Man, he just looks at home on Andro. He does. And we saw Andro on Serpent Beach earlier today. I kind of asked Kresnik, what were his thoughts? Um, you know, where where does this champion kind of stand in your eyes? Neo, he survives the initial damage, falls to the back end. And Sanguine, throughout the rest of this fight, they're just chilling on the point. But Stigma with a nice double there on Andro with the Torvald bubble as well. And now Nation of Power are the ones back in control of this team fight. So, is there something about Serpent Beach that you would say that's kind of seen the Andro rise again? I think you, you probably agree with Kresnik, the verticality, yeah. the ability to, to move around the map well. It's all the same re reasons, really, that Eevee works. It's just, I don't know what it was about that draft, but I was like, it's just not, it's not a stigma pick yet. I mean, I, mean, I think the kid's an incredible player and could probably get there. But you can, see, you can just see the difference between the yep. Andro and the Eevee. It's comfort. I mean, I think he could have even done this on Bright Marsh and probably looked better just because of the level that he feels comfortable executing this pick. So much of, of flankers is, is what you feel good about, what you feel Ooh. confident pulling up. Nearly gets it with the accursed arm. Does get it, well, with the actual arm on the champion. Jay is going to be the one to actually clean up that kill. Most of the damage, though, coming from the Torvalded up Stigma. Here comes some ultimates, though. Sanguine with a little bit of flank around the back side. Neo's going to just try to hold things off at the moment. Unfortunately, too much shield to burn through and not enough health to do it. Flame Effects and Edgem are going to be able to stall out this payload push here at the moment, though. Two minutes left, so just a, a baby, just a young baby payload push as of right now. Hasn't grown up just yet. Still has another two minutes to become a fully grown payload push. <laughs> and we'll have to see. We are we are all waiting with bated breath. To see if that happens. 148. Now as more and more kills come through, I will say Flame is not being shy about diving and diving and diving and just no, giving right. up his life to try and burn as much time as possible off of the clock. Early on, when there's no wrecker, Stigma really is going to get to have his way. But later on in this game, once his wreckers come online, especially for the Bomb King, who's going to be one or two tapping these shields pretty much, that's when uh, Stigma is going to have to let off the gas a little bit. They've made great use of that advantage, though, off the bat here. You said it pretty well. Stigma feeling more comfortable does the same there with a nice wallop to the face of the Bomb King. Edgem drops a Nara, though. Or a Nara. Imani, though. Excuse me. So it's a one-for-one one trade up to this point. The assert dominance with a little head boop up on the ceiling. Is he able to get out alive, though? He has so many eyes turned to him. Stigma, unfortunately, not going to be able to escape that one. No amount of Torvald, Torvald bubbling gets you out of that one. You have a Leon. You have a assert dominance up in your face. It tends to go that way. 
No, I think that's a really good job by Flame FX to hit that stun quickly, take his time to rotate to kinetic burst him further into the room yep. so he's not able to just like immediately dash or, or back off that high ledge. So well played there from him. The baby payload push growing before our eyes. We have a young adult adolescent payload push now at the moment. 30 seconds left uh, till complete adulthood. Sanguine, though, they have four ultimates to burn. Nation of Power might as well have five. They might not need it, though. Poison, he trades out his life. A one for one now. Stigma still alive. The Torvald bubble and the Genos going on to him most of the time here. That's a lot of damage amp in his favor. So once the Torvald bubbles go away, still have Genos that are helping you out a little bit. Stigma takes the 1v1 with Neo, wins that one, and starts off this Nation of Power push in a, in a big way. Overtime is going to be long and hard. There's a lot of uh, ways this oh could go at this point. Confident push in nice. the backline. Enlightenment just to buy some damn time and force Stigma to chill out for a second. Jay finds the first kill here. Hands go up, hands go down. No dash reset there, but they'll be up on their own accord in a couple of seconds. And Stigma continues to roar. Wow. He is just everywhere on the map right now. Oh, it's whoa. Possible to call him out. That's so unfortunate. They looked like they were going to win it. Stigma just running oh, rampant I thought, through I this. Went no, in. yeah, Sanguine were able to defend there. Not able to get a touch. Overtime just not in their favor. I definitely thought that went in. That's, uh, I did it first and then saw it come up red. That's unfortunate for Nation of Power. I mean, that, that was about as guaranteed of a push as you can get. I think that they were just, they, one of their tanks got burned down and that, that was it. They didn't have somebody else in room to contest. I think Stigma tried at it just a little bit late, so. A little bit of luck, but maybe some good target prioritization. Find Sanguine tied up here one to one against Five, Nation of Power. Four, you have three, uh, two, some Kronos is getting bought here. Tay and T Mac each going that route. Wrecker twos online for Sanguine. That's what we talked about. The Torvald bubbles become a little less lengthy as the game goes on here. But you have to uh, you have to commend Stigma. He's looked great on this Andro so far. All you had to do was show a presence, and everybody started to retreat oh. there. Almost gets the damage. Nice shots from Niu to make sure that this Andro gets punished for his transgressions. One for nothing so far, but the dragon's coming in, looking to try and change that. Just dancing around to this wall here, trying to avoid as much of the dragon damage as possible. Sanguine do just that. With the barrack going a little low in this case. Flame FX now retaking the mantle up here on the high ground. 320 health. He's going to get the banner off in time and stays alive. But the King Bomb comes rolling through. 22 health. They're not able to clean up Neo. And he's going to get some healing. So either well played or unfortunate for Nation of Power and Sanguine. Whichever way you look at it, Neo's still alive. And they have 93%. The Dome Shield's going to come out just to try to secure it. 99%. Overtime's going to go ticking away. Stigma now getting up in the face of the Dome Shield. He's getting melted away, but it's enough to push back the Bomb King now. Nation of Power need to find some kills here if they want a chance to get back on the point. My goodness, he is rocking and rolling, isn't he? Luminary and the Field Study Pocket. It's an all-in on Stigma just doing the damage. And Imani does such great damage with just Luminary as well yep. that they, they're holding it together. The hardest thing about what Nation of Power's comp has to do is this Fernando, I think. I don't think he really is going to be able to contest as well as the Barrack Damba is going to allow for. So, you know, good on them for being able to hang in there. Jay doing a pretty good job so far. But despite winning the fight, it's felt like running that overtime fight as well. They don't get that payload conversion. They don't get this payload either. It's just little, little objective things right. that are going wrong for Nation of Power. Everything else looks good. It, it's an interesting way to look at it. I mean, if, if we were playing Team Deathmatch here, Nation of Power would be winning you know, handily. Handily, I would say. That's a good word for it. Here comes the Accursed Arm. He's found a few this game. Uh, not accursed Arm any needs kills in this case. You think? Back in the day, it used to just have, I'm not saying it needs to be like it, oh, it once was, but it was just had One no tap. fall off. It Instant had, kill. It had no fall off. So if you connected at all with the explosion, it would hit for the full thousand. Versus now, it's like those were pretty close shots and only hitting for half damage. It is an aggressive fall off. Andro needs something to be viable. I think Andro should be at all times a viable competitive team. Well, you have to remember, I mean, in this game he's viable, but he has a Torvald and a Genos um, at his back. I mean, he, again, it's looked good, and we saw it earlier today with just the just the Torvald, and it looked okay in that one as well. But it's still one of those interesting picks where we say, oh, that's interesting, rather than, okay, the Andro comes out, 
Here's why it's a good pick. It, it's sort of risk reward in this case. Unfortunately, not coming out. That's a good route to stop the shoulder bash. Oh Neo gets God. traded out as well. The King Bomb not meeting its target in the push. Successful for Sanguin. And again, <laughs> that, that was such an unassuming push. Like, uh, Sanguin, once on the defense, finds themselves the defense seemingly out of nowhere. And then the push. Sure, they found a couple kills, but it looked like maybe Nation of Power were in the zone to be able to stop it. Uh, but it goes in Sanguin's favor. And as all things, you know, Stigma putting a lot of pressure on Niu, but as evidenced by the slash lines, Edgem's doing a good job. And that was in that replay was his only Point death of this game. Eight seconds. and one. Yeah. So as pressure is being applied to Niu, it's he, they're keeping a lid on him. Forty seven thousand damage, four and eight right now, but because of that, Edgem has been allowed to really flourish four, here. Eighty three thousand damage, even two, more than one. the luminary field studied Androxis. So Edgem doing a lot. Bearing a lot of weight on his shoulders and definitely keeping his team in this one. They're up three to one here against yep. all odds. We really haven't felt like it's going yep. saying which way, but the scoreboard is what the scoreboard is. I was going to say that's very quiet. Eight and one out of Edgem. Um, he, I mean, he's found the kills, of course, and the slash line is brilliant. But look at that through time and space very, ability. Very, very slow. <laughs> Poison just ticking away here on the dragon does not find the kill, but finds a little chunk. How lit would that be if the dragon could cast through, through time and space? Through the pillar. <laughs> Boom! Just loads up a huge fireball and acts just like it. That would that be a lot of fun fair. to watch. Yeah, seems good. Seems good. 90% here on the point. The kills are in their favor. 99 now ticking away. Jalen Sanity is going to be the one to potentially end this game. Edgem's going to further pad his stats here, and it looks like Sanguine are going to be able to take it. And yes, they are. So they find game number one here in our, or two. excuse me, game number two here in our fourth set of the day. They're able to answer back. And 4-1, uh, that was sort of an unassuming 4-1, I think. Uh, but they looked good doing it. They're up 2-0 to zero now, one game away from taking our fourth set. Send it back to Gorn Kresnik. Well, they come through, and they're looking just as good as they did last time they had to go through this matchup. A really close 4-3 for Bright Marsh, but Serpent Beach kind of changes the name of the game for them. Bomb King comes through and looks really good, along with the Leon on their side. Everything was just solid. Yeah, I mean, there goes to Rip Torv's win rate. <laughs> Rip Torv's win rate. Pappy's going even further going down. down. But uh, they had a really good draft into it, I think. I mean, Stigma was like... Performing. He was doing well. Yeah, I mean, his you guys could just tell, like, just from watching it, like his, he was moving so fluid. He was hitting a ton of shots. But when you're playing, when you're playing protective enough, when you're ready, when you put enough distance between you and him, he can't do what you'd expect. You know, he can't pop off to that level. I mean, he got yeah. Neo a lot, but what the pressure on Neo was made up for by the lack of pressure on Edge. Edge went nine and one, 92k damage. And just being able to find that, like, the, uh, that's, I think, the key point. 9 and 1, 92k damage. The next highest I see is 68, 78 there on Stigma. So almost 20,000 more. Let's say 25,000 overall. The next highest. And then even further, 35,000 over Poison. Of course, Bomb King. Between the two of them, it's, I mean, you're pincered, right? Who are you going to try to focus on? Are you going to try to deal with the Leon that's going to be uh, lasering you down from across the map? Or are you going to deal with the Bomb King who is going to blow you out of them? Yeah, I mean, they tried to they tried to pressure the BK and they did kill him, but like, he was equalizing a ton of these fights, you know? What a great Dreads are going to feel. But Bowler Steve, by the way, kind of unsung, unsung hero, but oh, yeah. he, he kind of came out of nowhere this season and quickly rose to be like, clearly, like he was having sc like scrim after scrim where he wasn't dying, was getting all these super impactful ults. But uh, Neo, again, showing why people used to ban Bomb King every single game against Gangstars. <laughs> yeah, and it's uh, a strength they have. Frozen Guard, this is actually a really... <laughs> It's really funny we're coming here because I was actually just, as an example to you saying, hey, mm -hmm. if I want to look at, let's say, Sanguine last week, what's mm -hmm. the map they picked? Because I was just like, I'd love to be able to have those stats. Well, they yeah. picked Frozen Guard last week. It's actually the one thing they did. It was a 4-1 over Zenith at that time. So now you're looking at Nation of Power choosing this since it's loser's pick. They're going to be able to get first. But does it come back to bite them because of that? I think I get why they'd pick it, right? Because look at what Sanguine banned, right? They banned Warders and Fish. Yeah. Those are two very wide maps. Frozen Guard, I would say, is the third in that series of wide of maps. Wide. That's Sharknado 3 of wide maps. <laughs> so they, they, they're, clearly bringing out, the they're, cle never know. they're clearly bringing out something that they think they'll struggle with. Nation of Power also banning Leon trying to take that away from Edge. They clearly think that was a really massive factor uh, in Sanguine's victory last map. Well, last time around for Sanguine, this would have been 
like Kananara, Maldamba, Eevee, Leon is what they're running here. Cassie, I would say, since Leon is banned away, pretty easy to go into. Eevee is always going to be someone on the fence, especially if you aren't going to use a Genos with it. So I expect to see that come potentially later. Atlas on the side of Nation of Power, though, that's just a solid start, but not necessarily the most... Well, I guess actually out of all of this, he's won the one game he's been in this set. It's true. So, and his poke is really strong on this map. Again, very wide. Uh, Eevee, interesting pick on this map. I think she does sometimes struggle on Frozen. It really does depend on your composition. If they can keep enough distance, and they're already starting to kind of have a pokey comp with Cassianara. If they can keep enough distance between them and the Eevee, they're going to really limit her potential. If she has to use Blink and Soar all life. the way and then land yeah. on you just to get on you, well, that's A, you can shoot her the whole Soar, and B, you know she's coming, because uh, unless you have your audio off. I mean, I'm just going to throw it out there. Edgem was playing Cassie earlier up against the EV that, yeah, at the time, was on Stigma. Might not be Stigma this time around. Depends on whether or not they want to go for the Imani for Nation of Power. But handled it just fine then. Again, it wasn't necessarily a bad performance from Stigma as much as it was just control coming down from Sanguine. It what? was what? able Standing to cause a lot of trouble. But now you get the Barrack and potentially... Maybe a Victor? Kanessa. And I like that. I love watching Stigma play Kanessa. I was about to say, it is Stigma, right? So that makes... Yeah. It warms my heart. On this but they have map. a good composition to deal with it. I mean, they have the Ash again to it. I'm not sure if they're going to pick like a Brawly kind of fight to end this up. To Charlotte, okay, so double poke. So again, that's it. also still fine to the Kinesa. If you can, you can yeah. get both your back lines to hit her at the same time, you're going to get her down to like 100 HP. Well, we're going to see something interesting. I've seen a lot more Shaolin today than I expected, and I feel like we might have more in our future based on some of the things I've been seeing behind the scenes. But the question is whether or not it can handle the Kinesa or not. Let's go down to the casters and see if they think it can. See if we think it can. That's the ultimate question. Yeah. I, what, well, no, they're seeing what we think. So <laughs> show me about that, that scene in Lord of the Rings. Like this. What do you see? <laughs> go out of eyes. <laughs> Just Can't remember zoom what in a little bit. Uh, yeah, I don't know. To don't follow that, that up, one of the other great scenes in that particular Lord of the Rings movie is when um, they stop and he says, what do you smell? And he goes, Man fresh. And then somebody <laughs> pointed this out to me. One of the orcs in the background immediately just like darts his eyes to the sky and starts looking around as if like the men are going to be flying around them like, <laughs> like a murder of crows or something. I thought that was really of course. funny. That is the only logical option. <laughs> once you can Take to the skies. Frantically searching the skies <laughs> for the man flesh. <laughs> because uh, that's those, where it comes. Those silly Yurikai. Soaring from the sky. What will be soaring from the sky, though, are the arrows of Edgem. How do you feel about the Shaolin, Nick? Uh, it's as good as you make it, I think. And, and to be honest, it was a raise earlier Let's that was like really begin. definitely changing my mind a little bit on this pick. Not, to think, not that I think it's bad. It's just been kind of like good enough or bad to me. It's never like taken over a game in a long time. And Shaolin used to be very cool and kind of like my style where you yep. could almost play him like pretty flanky and, and it was very high risk for high risk high reward loadouts are have always been my favorite to play and he kind of got dulled down a little bit for yep. me so i've never been as big of a fan of him after that after that change i do like the way kind of seeing it now in action i hadn't really thought about it going into the game the way the the atlas wall is going to be able to get played around with the with the Kinesa. i mean that allows Kinesa to poke her head out and, and free fire just for a few seconds to avoid a lot of the damage coming in on her. Uh, Nation of Power, they find first blood, and they were already on the point to boot. Jay on this barrack, he's the one who's going to be doing it. 81% here for them. Sanguine were on the point to start things off, but a good rotation. The wall stopping her from being able to contest. Instead, it's going to be Ash that goes down, but Flame Effects, he gets cleaned up. Nation of Power, they look poised to take point number oh, one. Man, Escort. leaving Stigma alone here on the ice ball is going to be difficult. They've drafted the themselves. Uh, definitely, his, his watch is not over yet. Stigma oh, is my. Yeah. a cool three times as far ahead as everybody else. And running this Temporal Divide oh. on Frozen Guard as well, it's, it's such an important part of being able to keep him safe. You have to dive him. I think yep. Sanguine are going to have to make some big adjustments in the next round to deal with him. I mean, and, and look at that. I mean, he hit a headshot on the uh, the tumbling Cassie nearly got the one shot, which wasn't satisfying to see. The payload rounding the first corner here. A minute and 50 seconds left. And we're looking to, to try to get this one pushed through. Just, uh, Frozen Guard, not the easiest map to find the offensive push on, to say the least. Uh, it becomes a little easier once you're able to get into the enemy team's base. And Ice Storm's going to be chunking away now at Flame Effects. The healing's going to be good right now, though, but can they clean him up? Instead, Oof. it gets turned around onto Tay. 
Flame Effects, some good healing, keeps him alive. It actually finds him a kill, but Stigma, he's able to free fire from the back line. Edgem's gonna be the one to drop him. Finally, they finally found an answer for the Knessa. They find a defensive hold here at the moment. Only 118 headhunters coming up and available, so is the fear. And lots of long range poke between the Cassie and the Shaw and the Knessa. So it's really just a matter of who hits the shots, kid, first. And they both have <laughs> Shaw. Character. Yeah, the shots on the Shaw Lin. <laughs> they have Eevee, they have Ash, they have the gap closers. Whichever team it is that gets that good poke and calls out a little target first. These are the temporal divides, yep. though, that are going to matter. Trying to shut oh, it down. No. And they shut it all down. Nice shot from Stigma. It just shows you how open and how free Stigma is able to play when the Temporal Divide comes out. The Dome Shield is going to get dropped by Barrack, and that buys a little bit of space now for his team. The Shaman's going to respawn, so back to full health. What matters is that the payload is pushed through. Neo's going to clean up Stigma, so that's a lot of that backline pressure that's now gone for Nation of Power. They still have the Atlas, who's going to be doing lots of good burst damage. He's able to rewind himself back to full health. Gives himself a second chance in this fight. 20 seconds left right now, though. A one for one on the second engagement of this one. Poison just kind of hanging out at the base, poking, getting a little dismount going as well. 10 seconds left here. Flame Effects finally is able to get rid of Atlas, uh, who will be riding back from base. It's going to be on to Jay to try to get a touch here, Nick. That's a good shoulder bash. <laughs> Launches him off the map. As I say it, unfortunately for him, catches the shoulder to the dome and goes flying. Looks like Sanguine are going to get themselves point number one here uh, in pretty convincing fashion. It's, a, it's all, honestly, from what I saw, you might have a different take on it, but it's, it's entirely on whether they're able to clean up Stigma. Once he was down, they were able to push out from their base uh, and, and find some good team fights. Yeah, pretty much. And being the shaped like a bowling ball and as tough as a bowling ball definitely has its pros and its cons there. <laughs> poor little bear just gets punted off the map. No mobility. I was surprised he didn't have a, a rocket boots cool down there. That character is going to be, sounds like pretty scary in the next patch as well. So a lot of things changing. Amani getting a buff. What type of impact that buff has is entirely dependent. I don't know if you were paying attention to the loadout um, that we saw. Well, of course you're paying attention. You're, you're right here casting this with me. That loadout where we saw. That doesn't mean anything. The, uh, <laughs> the, the, the cooldown the cool cards and the shifts. If that playstyle starts to catch fire, then that buff will mean something. But if it doesn't, then it probably won't. I mean, that's really where all the value is. If anything, it'll help people start to explore that type of load. It's one of those have to wait and see. The seismic crash is going to catch Stigma. 59 health does end up getting dropped by Edgem, though. He has now two in this fight here. He's going to try to keep on the gas pedal right now. There comes the burst damage. He finds three. He finds his third. Looking for his fourth now onto Jay, but Jay's able to get himself out alive. And Sanguine, there on the point. As I say it, though, the wall blocks off his retreat. And now Sanguine can set up the defensive stand. Behind the scope here, Niu playing with fire. Poke. He's going <laughs> to eat that, that 1,200 damage shot. Gets the heal, rolls in. Kind of getting into a bad spot here. Temple Divide goes out. Eevee's yep. rolling to the back line, but that's a critical bolt. Just hitting that puts Eevee yep. in such a bad spot instead of being like, I'm in the driver's seat of this dive. Now I'm in trouble. The tables have turned. Ooh, nice stun. Gets a double stun in this one. Does flame FX, and that could be all they need. He's going to go shoulder bashing through. Catches a little bit of the wall right now. And now he's in onto Stigma. Just needs to hit a few of his shots. The teleporter goes away. Tay actually reverses a little bit of damage. And Nation of Power find the first kill despite Sanguine seemingly being on the front foot here. Stigma back to full health. Now he can get back to his range. That's a good rewind from him. 66% for Nation of Power. Both teams not wanting to make a mistake. One mistake at this point with the percentage as high as they are. Whichever team wins the team fight is going to end up winning the point. But Sanguine, they need to go now. There it is. A lot of damage out onto that Knessa. Ash definitely could die this if she had her mobility cooldowns. Big dome shield from Nation of Power as they start the first overtime in favor of Red. Jalen Sanity, he's holding firm. That's the guy you got to look out for. Ash could dive, and Ash did dive, but Ash did die in this case. Hey, staying alive right now. No, actually wins the Edgem. 1v1 against Edgem. Neo answers with one back. This fight is balancing on a knife edge. Overtime in favor of both teams, actually, at the moment. Poison, though, he's still alive. He's putting out damage. The Slither, as you say, gets the healer out of damage range. Stigma finds a kill, and Nation of Power find themselves the point fight. One of the more contested points that we've seen all day. Definitely, and I think all of that happens as a result of the Sanguine Zone isn't able to be as effective as I think they would like. 
partially is because Stigma dismounted himself fairly early and prevented Neo from taking line of sight of the enemy spawn base. So couldn't get those dismounts early, couldn't slow down the approach. The take back was good, Dome Shield was good. There was a couple of like really close moments that just went the way of Nation oh. of Power. Starting with that shoulder bash from Flame Effects, the way that like clipped on that wall and he didn't make it all the way up the staircase yeah. to Kinesa, that was that was rough. Obviously, Edgem not winning that duel with Tay on the low ground when they were both like one HP, that was rough. So stuff like that going the way of Nation of Power is, is why we are where we are. 0% the Headhunter is going to get used here from Stigma, and as such, he finds a kill onto Flame Effects. That's going to open up this payload to start pushing through. Remember, under that archway is where things start to become a little bit hairy, actually, for the defending team, depending, of course, on where the, the numbers stand in the team fight. Poison just trying to play the edge here nearly gets dropped. Edgem hits a good shot there, but does not end up cleaning up the EV. He's able to get out. But now he's kind of just flanking around from behind. You have to kind of watch all your corners here from... Uh, if you're on, po if you're poison, excuse me. I mean, you're able to utilize your mobility, but you have to be careful not to bite off more than you can chew. There's the dome shield. It's going to buy Nation of Power a little bit of space right now. But Jalen Sanity on the NR. I'm just going to face tank that. I have the healing behind me right now. Edgem finds the first kill in this engagement. He could be looking to find a little bit more right now. His shots are going on to T Mac. If you're able to clean up the healer in this uh, uh, situation, that's going to be really big for your team. But Stigma answers back with one as well. 42 seconds on the clock. Two mid-range shots from Eevee connect onto Anara. One onto the high ground on the Cassie, so Poison doing a good job keeping the pressure applied, but at this stage, not a high level of cauterize online and very intermittent intervals of damage, so they don't stay applied for very long. Cauterize only lasts for uh, about a second and a half is that yep. debuff. So it will fall off if you don't keep the constant pressure, and obviously this Ceres has been on it all day long. She is going to just top people up left and right if she's got the opportunity to. Bauer Steve doing a wonderful job of keeping the Sanguine boys all nice and healthy. This is a good spot for Ceres as well, just dancing in and out of the base. Four seconds left. One team not wanting to go beyond the archway, the other team not wanting to leave the archway. Overtime is going to come out in favor. The Temporal Divide is going to be a little bit back right now. Damage starting to come back. Edgem gets a little too aggressive and ends up catching a Stigma Bullet right to the face. That could be all Nation of Power need here to push this one through. But now he's been caught out. Are they going to be able to find the kill here? He's so low. Neo is the one who's going to find it. The Dread Serpent sends a couple running as well. But Neo on the Cassie, he's low. But he doesn't need health. All he needs are some crossbow bolts. He finds a couple kills. Finally gets cleaned up by Jay. But the damage was done at that point. Now it's down to Tay. He's going to be the last line of defense. But that's all they need. Sanguine. They find themselves a big defense. That could have gone the opposite direction. They didn't burn too much on the Nation of Power side, though. The, uh, the Dome Shield relatively quickly charging. I think realizing maybe that they could push it through or trying to push it through without using their ults. But Sanguine, they hold firm. Yeah, very solid sequence there by Niu to get some good damage out. That's all said and done. Jay, three, three, and six on the barrack. Nearly top damage in this game, despite that very, very large deficit that he was at early on. Now, granted, a lot of this comes with just, you know, smacking Anara in the face for like 10 minutes straight while Sarah's just like pours the healing in. But that's all good stuff. And that leads into, you're right, in this type of game, Dome Shield is going to be a relatively quick charging ultimate. You have to be careful in those scenarios that when you play the Anaras and the Makoas and things like that with right. a lot of throughput, you can make yourself, if you're not positioning yourself well and you're not rotating around well and you're not playing well, Yes, you're not dying, but you're also just a ult battery for the enemies if you're making yourself a very easy target to smack for a ton of damage. An ult battery indeed. The rest of Nation of Power, they have four. They have a lot of the utility going into this fight. Convergence will be up very shortly. Seismic Crash as well. He's going to try to exile a few. Gets a little cooldown back, so it looks like he only hit one of his shots in this case. Uh, maybe his second here, 25%, refreshed back onto the ultimate. Poison, though, he finds the first kill on this side. Make it a double oh now from the Eevee. He could get aggressive and find a third if he wants to try to push in on Baller Steve. Catches some orbs to the face, but instead he's going to get the upper hand nearly. Just misses the final shot in this case. And the phase walk is going to be able to get the healer out alive. you got to be careful to get too aggressive. The Nation of Power, that's all they needed. That's all the advantage they needed to take point number one. The Headhunter, the Dread Serpent. Uh, and the Atlas Ultimate as well. Sheesh. Those are the only three that are used. Well, Sanguine, have, uh, they've got to figure it out. This payload has been knocking on Death's door every single time for them. Thankfully, it hasn't gone through just yet, or that would have been the final capture of the game. Nation of Power, likewise, 
need to make sure that they, they keep this one locked down and uh, be on their toes if this yep. goes another round. Sanguine are too good of a team not to make any adjustments or not to put any type of weird spin on the strategy in the next right. round. So it's I am I really don't like games. I, I always get this like very gnawing feeling in the back of my mind. <laughs> if I'm just offense, offense, offense all game, we come to the three three point fight. I'm like, what are oh, they nice. what are they about to do? What are, right, they're, been, they're throwing they're throwing a curveball at us one way or the other. I mean They've been getting smacked by this opener all game long. What have they been cooking up for, you know, eighteen minutes into this game? Well, that I mean I guess that separates really good teams from, from teams who have not quite figured it out as much yet. I mean you lose three straight uh, mid fights and you don't change anything and lose the fourth that that just brings your adjustments into question and Sanguine not the type of team that you would chalk up as being a team that can't make adjustments so they'll have something up their sleeve but first they got to get there there's a minute left in this payload it's not have far to go here's the seismic crash as well as the ice storm things are going to get started off here the dome shield is going to mitigate a little bit of damage Jalen Sanity he could go down he does Poison's going to be the one to find that but Neo answers back it's a one for one so far in this fight, Nick. 45 seconds left, though, and Neo staying alive. Neo and Stigma, they've got Earth. Neo and the Edgem have to get involved here. Things are going to get ugly if they're not careful. Poison continuing to find more. Exiled out and away from the payload. Big blast there, charging up fully. Poison has just been the guy. Stigma early on, but later in the game, Poison was absolutely lights out on Eevee. Well, potentially, Nation of Power trying to say no 3-0 for you today. And it's looking like it's going to go that way. The assert dominance, that would have actually been pretty good. Maybe just buying a little bit of time. But Nation of Power, again, they say no 3-0 for you. They find game number three here in this case. But Sanguine still looked pretty good. They were able to hang in there. But you had Stigma on the Knessa. That was a pretty big difference maker. Yeah, Frozen Guard is still a little bit of a fringe pick. And a lot of teams can get not taking advantage of it's a 4-3 right so it's still a pretty good game overall right. but there's just a lack of knowing what to do they right. couldn't figure it out what to do on those mid fights so Sanguine unfortunately are going to lose this one and we're going to go to game four well Nick had his thoughts send it back to the desk to hear theirs well admittedly when I come out of that game the first thing I think is the same thing I thought after round one or really just point one uh Stigma's still good at Kinesa yeah because it turns it? out did you see after his damage after that first mid, he had like six times the damage of the second highest person behind him? Not not exactly what you expect, no. I guess, out of the Knessa more than anything. I mean, it's just so many good shots. It's kind of the downfall when they were downfall. I mean, they're Nation of Power now, but way back when they were known more for, known as downfall when they had uh, Shadow and Edge. What, 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 what's up, Gore? You're kind of. Jay did the most damage in the game. The Barrack. Out damage the Knessa, the Eevee, the Cassie, and the Shaolin throughout all of this game. And by a decent margin, like almost 10,000 damage ahead. So Jay just showing the work you can put in on Barrick. Yeah, that's the power of having an Inara and a Ceres directly in front of you that you are doing <laughs> nonstop damage to. Yeah. If he were Deft Hands just 3, pumple. he might have just felt okay. Like, Either way, it comes down to it. Yes, he did a lot of damage, but the slash line was more in favor of Poison. A 7.8 KDA for that game. And kind of a return again. Game one, Stigma was playing Eevee, and we were kind of confused by it. I think a lot of people were. This time around, they put him on the Knesset. They grab up the Eevee, and Poison makes it look good. Yeah, absolutely. Poison has been very, very strong on this Eevee uh, in the past, and obviously right now his performance has shown that this holds strong. Yeah. He, uh, this Knesset, like Knesset Eevee, has been something that they've run in the past, and I honestly think that Stigma maybe just isn't comfortable on the Amani. So... As they get in here, the reason they didn't go with the Imani and then went with Kinesis instead was like, well, we need something that we want Poison to play. Yeah, so like, instead of putting Poison on, on the Imani, maybe let's just get the Kinesis for Stigma so we can keep Poison on that comfort pick. Sometimes comfort picks make the big difference. I mean, that's uh, literally when I'm thinking back to the SSG set, there was a certain point where it just came down to, you know what? Get rid of Atlas and Imani. Let's just go with what we know. And yeah. admittedly, that can open up the door. Go with what you know seems to be where we're going. So we're going to Ice Mines, which has been, again, the turnaround for a lot of these teams. Like, it used to be that, hey, we're fighting for 3-3. Still a little bit of fighting for 3-3 in this, but a lot of it has been kind of turned around and jumbled up. Some teams have figured it out, and they will find like a 4-0, a 4-1, or a 4-2. Yeah, I mean, this is really good, I think, for a team that just lost a map to try to like reset everything. If that team yeah. is like, oh, we, oh my god, yeah, we did it! Ice Mines is a, is a map that is not going to go fast. It's going to potentially go very slowly or... 
Uh, assuming a strong outdraft, it could go pretty quick. Uh, standard Come bands, though. Here. Tanks, Come very strong boy. on ice mines, so getting rid of four of them early Wowzers. makes sense. BK first pick. I can't say I'm surprised. I will fight I'm not surprised. The of well, the that's mind. not true. I'm surprised, but I'm also not surprised. <laughs> <laughs> because you're surprised on the grand scheme of things, but like yeah. just looking at the two teams, you're like, all right, yeah, life. I get it. Well, you're Stay like looking at the front lines. Lead. Atlas and Khan have been the first picks if Makoa and Dorvald are not available. And Nara and Ash are really good, but you don't need them. You can still go Great for a barracks or something gods. right here. So like you're not stressed Spirits for front lines. Cannot. And both of these teams have a phenomenal bomb king. So you know that can make a big difference, especially on ice mines. And so it's not surprising to see Sanguine try to grab him up. It's just... First pick is not usually where Bomb King has been sitting as of late. Yeah, Sanguine, actually, one thing I want to note, uh, this is something that's been uh, the fact for a while. Sanguine taking T-Mac, uh, yeah. sorry, Sanguine taking Damba early, I think, to keep it from T-Mac, because yeah. I don't know if you've ever seen the statistics of T-Mac's Mal Damba pick rate. It's Pretty high. It's kind of, Pretty like, high. insanely Damn. high. Like, no matter what healers are meta, it is just, I mean, it's always been Damba, but they will always prioritize Damba over almost any other healer, and they take Damba light in Ying on their next rotation. Well, and the big thing, actually, throughout this, this set, they team. gave him, it like, is like, Ying, Genos, team, and he just me. got Moldamba for the and last game. And oddly enough, it's the one game they won. Maybe the healing has something to do with it. I'll say for my old stats, that kind of holds true from the stats I, t I kept back on Sanguine. Well, there you go. Maybe it's you the secret for a nation of power you just found out right here. Ban Moldamba and <laughs> Give them or take it. I mean, they took it. <laughs> or Give I guess you could take it. I mean, Bomb King Waldamba, not a usual first two picks for a team. Check. They close it out. Dash Barrick Fernando, Check. Cassie on the side of Sanguine. Everything's still. stable. Everything Check. fits every player, like almost line for line that I would expect there. The Pip comes through for Nation of Power. How do you like this? I mean, Pip on Ice Mines is a, is a character that you can first pick Pip on Ice Mines, similar to how you can and first pick okay. a BK, and you're like, we might have just won draft. We, we might have just won the draft. We've had literally the one pick, but maybe we just won this game. And that's where Sanguine are looking. Still up two maps. They can close it out right here if they win, and it is going to be their pick. Ice Mines is where it's at. Let's see if it ends here, too. They are looking good, though. Nation of Power. They looked better last game, but they don't have Stigma on the Knessa this time around. Instead, he's going to be on the Leon, but another champion that he's looked great on. But Pip, though... That's one that always finds a way to throw a wrench in the mix of any team fight. Especially, it's seemingly, if I'm ever playing against a Pip, every time I have a team fight going well, that's when the evil mojo Look comes at. out and turns everything God on its head. Dang it! <laughs> that's the, the power it brings. are at it again. That's the power it brings. There'll be little alien boys this time. One of the best things about Pip skins is all the guns you get. You get new chickens. That's true. You get the little alien chickens. Ghost chickens, ghost chickens, chickens mm -hmm. all kind of, I guess roosters, I guess. What are what are peppers? Are peppers regular chickens? I have no idea. Good question. Are they boy chickens instead of girl? I mean, that's maybe the way it goes. Hens. Right, they're hens. They're, you, there you go. Instead of cocks? <laughs> that's, I mean, that's probably the way it works. Uh, it, what is working, though, is the zone that Pip is kind of providing here, not wanting to peek around the corner. Nation of power. First ones to get onto the point here. Oh, Ooh, that's a good stun. A little splat from around the corner. A little gat. A little prat, prat. And unfortunately, not enough to keep Sanguine from rounding the corner, though. Flame Effects is finding himself a good flank here. Not able to, oh, the shoulder bash, the immunity. Well played there. That Ash could not have had more than a couple hundred health. But well played timing on that one. Now the high ground belongs to Sanguine as they look to push out boys, but they're not going to have a lot of uh, healing coming in unless they make sure that they get themselves in a window. Zone control, map control, whatever you want to call it, taken back from Sanguine. Fernando Bomb King. Let's make this interesting. And an early evil Mojo. I mean, yep. he built morale boost. First things first, he's not going to get any of his chickens. They're aliens, actually, but he's not going to be able to get them nonetheless. Seismic wow. Crash comes down. There's a few stuns. They've had good ultimates, but they haven't been able to find the kill. Stigma's going to be the only one. 45 health on Edgem. He's able to stay alive going toe-to-toe. -to -toe. He actually wins that 1v1, I think, without the shield being in his face. But Tay now, at this point, he's able to zone out a couple, 90% on the point. They need to get a touch, but I'm not sure anyone's in position. Nation of Power, they have a quiet first point. There's a lot of back and forth, a lot of poke, but no clean sweep. Nation of Power don't need it, though. If they can hang in there, I think they'll be in a pretty good spot. This King Bob's coming through, and it's going to look for a little bit of damage. He calls it off early. I'm surprised. Oh, no. He made it oh. out of that one. 
But once this Nation of Power composition can get resilience online, they're dealing with Evil Mojo, Seismic Crash, a certain dominance, none of those stuns are really working anymore. They'll have a much easier time about this. So it's all about hanging in there, hanging on, staying alive. Getting Wreckers online is going to yep. help them. Cauterizes are going to help them. Because there's two big healers. And even if you look at Leon, she has a decent amount of self-sustain with some of the loadout cards that have been popular recently, those Presence Healing You. For most often, people run this at four. You need two or three in Inheritance. People run a little bit uh, uh, of some of the other flavor things you want. But Heraldry and uh, Present Arms have been by far and away for more popular cards. Stigma further bolsters that point. He has a pretty good lo loadout, excuse me, going for him. Not going to get the 50% reset with the kill on the Enlightenment. It's going to go just wide, a little dash. Gets the Sanguine players out of harm's way here. The payload's going to round this first corner. Uh, seemingly without too much opposition from the other side. Sanguine are going to be okay just to set up their defense. Uh, up top here, Nation of Power, though. They've looked good so far onto Ice Mines. And remember, this is Sanguine's pick. So uh, you maybe would have expected a little bit different of a start here from them. The Dread Serpent and the Dome Shield, though, those, those will have some good value here on the defensive end. The Evil Mojo is ready. He's going to get one. He is going to drop Flame Effects. But the Dread Serpent comes out as an answer and Poison. He falls as well as a result. Edgem now getting a little bit more confident rounding this corner. He has T-Mac in his sights. He's going to jump back to the opposite clone to keep himself from going down. There it is. Oh, one more no. pull. Can't find it. Edgem lets Ying escape. She's a healer that does well with line of sight. So trapping her in her corner is a pretty decent way to deal with the healing coming out from this character. And as you can see, maybe by proxy of death, this offense has slowed down just a little bit. Certainly has. 15 seconds left. This is going to come down to one final team fight. Flame effects. Well, that shield is blocking off the entire doorway. He's about half health right now. The Gord's going to get him nice and topped off, though. Or halfway topped off, I guess I should say. Some ultimates ready. King Bomb could come out here for Sanguine if they need it. Looks like it's going to be it, but the banner's going to come down. Neo's going to get killed off before he's able to King Bomb here. Edge him, though. Answers back. Sanguine, they have a one-for-one one at the moment. The Nation of Power, they're the healthier lineup right now. If they start going in the wrong direction, this could go bad. Stigma finds Jalen Sanity and things going in Nation of Power's favor at the moment. All they need to do is start getting some picks. There it is. Healer will go down. The sustain is gone, and... Likely the chances of this offense succeeding as well. Yep. Edgen's finding a couple kills from the backside. Ball of Steve throws his name into the kill feed. Just like that, it will Boom. be a sanguine hold. Hold they do. One to one. Looked like it could have gone through there. The pick's just going in the opposite side. A little tip of the cap here to T-Mac. He's had a pretty good game thus far, keeping his teammates nice and healthy. Definitely. Some good dashes back and forth with the clones. Wicked tracking, too, on that mirror. Well done, I dig brother. The, uh, I dig the weapon. Yeah, awesome this is, uh, I think it's pretty much the best Ying skin there is. There, there's definitely elements of the other skins that are super, super good. But You can disagree, but you'd be wrong. Yeah. <laughs> it is my opinion, but also Four, fact in this, three, in this matter two, at hand. Well, those things are normally one and the same, Nick. Ah, well. Isn't that the case? We can't all be, uh, can't all be as rock solid as your opinions, Dave. That's true. I got the hottest takes. Precious clothes, chillest restaurants, yada, 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 <laughs> et, cetera, I et cetera. I appreciate the the concise version of that one that you've thrown out. <laughs> Nobody would talk to me at LAN. That's, that's for right. sure. That's the undeniable fact. The wall comes up. That's going to keep Edrum from poking his head around the corner. Jay finds the first kill here in round number two. Some damage just getting burnt away now at the Inar. There's a Bomb King up top as well, holding down the damage. He loses the 1v1 to Stigma. Now, Stigma has some targets. He's going to potentially be able to 2v3 this one with uh, the help of Tay on the, the Ash. And in seemingly similar fashion to round number one, Nation of Power with a good zone. Just send one to hang out on the point while they poke around these corners. Pushing into Evil Mojo and Enlightenment is not an easy thing to do as well. Poison's going to try to push down this Fernando, oh, no. but in and out. Dome Shield, this is it. This is the opportunity to bounce back. Burning away right now. Poison, though, finally cleans up one. Doesn't get the value out of the evil mojo that he's been looking for. Edgem has the lone kill now for Sanguine, and down goes Jalen's sanity as well. It looks like Nation of Power, despite an iffy start to that team fight, the they're going to capture the payload and potentially push this one through. Oh, he's low. 190 health. He's smarter than to poke his head back around that corner, hoping 
Tossing out that fishing line is Edgem, but he's not going to get the chance. Now you got the two-minute, 15-second timer for Nation of Power. Two to one here. Sanguine, though, they held firm on the previous defense, and they look to do the same here. This is just no bueno. I mean, it, for my money, it feels like this is Jay and Tay on the uh, Inara and the Ash, respectively, winning this game for the boys. They're creating so much space, and, and, and Miyu's been sat on the majority of this game and shut down. He was 0-2 going into this round. You can't have your... Your first pick, this is a character you're first picking because it's solid, but primarily because you just love it. Now it's 0-4. Right. This is literally Flame of X 0-5. This combination, this, they're supposed to be commanding the space, not getting pushed around in 0-9. Uh, I think that's a fair assessment of the situation. Looking to turn things around, though, is the King Bomb. Right. He's just going to find a clone, unfortunately. Actually getting kind of outpoked by the long-range pip there. So, goes fishing with the King Bomb. Comes up a little bit short here. They're gonna have to look elsewhere for dinner. The Evil Mojo is ready though. We've seen some good, some bad out of poison this game on the Evil Mojo. He's not gonna need to use it here as Edgem is gonna be the one to fall. So Sanguine on the defensive end, already down to a 4v5. And there's lots of utility for Nation of Power to get this push through. Jalen Sanity is not making things any easier as he goes down as well. That's a good stun, and it looks like this one is poised to go through. Oh my goodness, and it probably will, unless this goes the way of Poison. And they just really, really take it home there without even needing some of their ultimates. So maintaining kill, evil mojo. You kill the two tanks right off the bat without using anything. That tends to be the case. Enlightenment, Seismic Crash, all that gets brought out here from Nation of Power. So they'll have some good utility going into this potential final point fight. Good on Nation of Power to answer back here in this case. They were down 2-0, to zero, fought back with a win, and now are poised to potentially tie up this set at twos. Sanguine looked good, but have had a little bit of trouble finding their rhythm here down the stretch. Healing numbers looking good. Four, Ying, Nation three, of Power, T Mac two, keeping his team nice one. and healthy. Respectable numbers, though, from Baller Steve. Uh, he's had a bit of a tough hill to climb here in this case. Lots of damage coming out. Uh, from the opposite side, what do you think Sang would need to change here to maybe find a point fight win? Well, getting some value for their ultimates. They're giving up very, very early picks as well. Evo Mojo has been troublesome for them. They haven't been able to get later game resiliences on. Everybody just sitting at the 30% uh, crowd control reduction of resilience one at the moment. Strap for credits, strap for cash, strap for time. Dread Serpent doesn't do much. That's the type of stuff that, it, you know, has put them in this position. Ultimate's not really doing much for him. That's a good evil mojo. He's got a few aliens. He's got three, but he's not able to find the kills. Nation of Power, they're actually on the back foot. Sanguine, they're the ones who are on the point right now, but the Ultimate's still sort of in favor here. Uh, Sanguine, it depends how this King Bomb looks. It stuns up a couple of the damage, though. Oh, it's going to get mitigated. He hits his head on the top. He blasts off the Bomb King now. Neo goes down. Stigma and Tay combine for a couple. And Sanguine, despite a good start, some iffy ultimates turn this fight around in Nation of Power. Nobody on the point just yet. Edgem, that's, that's good from him to stabilize here. I was going to say Nation of Power retake this, but the response coming back from Sanguine. Yeah, everything looked pretty damn solid here. Comeback mechanic is enabled, but Sanguine still struggling to stay ahead and, and to grab these team fight victories. However, now as they move north of 90%, they're going to be putting the pressure on Nation of Power. One more tick would have captured it. Overtime started in favor of Blue. Ooh, so many grouped up targets here for Neo. If he wants to keep plugging away, he certainly can. He's not really going to need to. But the kills could come out on the back end and help this payload move forward. So Sanguine change some things up, find themselves their first point of this game. Get this payload moving forward here. Nation of Power have to try their hand of defense. And seemingly against all odds, if this one goes through, well, Sanguine, they're tied up at the end of the day. Nation of Power are going to have a few ultimates ready for the defense. Sanguine are going to have the same. Now we get to see how the Nation of Power champions hold here at defense. Still some good, they have the Leon, bit of a range advantage in that case. Things just seemingly went right there for Sanguine. Uh, on the yeah, point it, everything I think, partially not having not ultimates was a little bit of the reason. The Nation of Power played that point much, much more passive than they had in the past. True. And I don't even think that's, that's necessarily the play. I mean, even in the first round when nobody has ultimates, 
They played aggressive Ooh, and it worked out for them. I don't, it, you know, part of it is we're omniscient. We know exactly where everyone's ultimate charge right. is at all times. The players don't have access to that information, so they have to kind of just use their best guess, their judgment, what's been used, how recently, how long ago was that? Has he been, you know, hitting hitting us? Do we think he's got it? So you have to be careful in these later rounds of, of how aggressive you play, especially when you don't have your ultimates available and you're not quite sure where they might be sitting. Right. That's actually a really good point that you bring up. I mean, in reality, it's it's in some of these team fights. Ooh, unfortunate. The assert dominance would have been great there from Tay. Gets blocked out of it twice. Gets sent back to base as well. The stigma really just holding off five members of Sanguine right now. The rest of the team at uh, his back, though. They're able to push through the break. Get back onto the payload. 42 seconds remaining here. Things looking at least a little better. The defense had stalled out. Uh, that's a really good point you bring up about ultimates. I mean, they're able to to kind of gauge it, but the best they can say is, oh, you know, X champion just used their ult. It's yeah. not going to be back up for this team fight. We can go aggressive now. But, you know, as it gets to be 30 seconds to a minute later, you just don't really know. And that's where some of the communication comes in handy here. 15 seconds left, though, Nick. Uh, Sanguine could tie it up here. You know what they'll be looking to spend, though, because it's not been the most convincing. I don't think they'll spend here. I think they're really going to try to get this one through the old-fashioned oh, way. A couple of opportunities for kills, but up on his high horse, Stigma is in such a great spot to just tee off on people from a long-distance rage, scale up that damage with yep. the eminence, and it's going to be gravy from there. Yeah, and you pretty much read their minds in that case once, uh, once they lost one. Jalen Sandy had the opportunity on uh, on the barrack to throw down the dome shield, elected not to. Uh, we stay at three to two here. Stigma 12, three and eight. Not too shabby from the kid here on the Leon. Uh, but you have to look at the opposite side, Neo and Edgem combining for top two damage in the game. But they have, to be fair, been on defense a good portion of the time. They're able just to kind of hang back and plug away here. Stigma, though, he finds the big kills towards the end. All right, but Sanguine, they're the ones who won the most recent point fight, so they'll be looking for more of the same. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Five, Indeed. Now, four, lots of late game items three, starting to come two, online. Lots of Brazil. A lot of, yeah, plenty of resilience. Everybody hitting that level three cauterized that started it for Sanguine. Pretty much the same story for Nation of Power. Stigma went for the wrecker. But he's already still made it almost into Cauterize 3. And Cauterize 2 is definitely super impactful. One, doesn't you don't really feel. Two, you really start to notice. And three is almost complete elimination of healing, barring any rejuvenates or loadout cards or cough, cough, moxie from Pip that can really just do a lot to counterplay uh, an anti-heal card. Look to drop Nation of Power back here. I know you can tell both teams are playing passive at the moment. Cassie Ultimate gets used. It would feel fine to do that. Just check out, see where everyone is. <laughs> the rest of the four remaining alts are still up high. Five for Nation of Power, though. Here comes the engagement. The Illusory Rift is going to keep people nice and healthy, but they're not able to capitalize on the Evil Mojo yet again. Here comes the Immortal and the Assert Dominance up top, but nobody, nobody is getting killed off just as of yet. Finally, Neo gets killed, and it looks like Flame Effects may be the next to fall, but he's not in this moment. The Dome Shield comes out. They're going to get onto the back foot. A single kill. Almost all of the ultimates in this game used, and only Neo gets killed in this case. I think they're, they're a little worried to commit right now. A lot of resilience online is negating the effects of a lot of these ultimates for Nation of Power, so they are struggling noticeably to, to get the kills on the chickens, to follow up on the seismic crashes and these assert dominance stuns. They're just not landing in enough time. Niu does get solo killed there. He needs to have a big impact. He's got the only ultimate left. Yep. Here it comes, the King Bomb rolling in, trying to win the game. He's going to use it. Lots of grouped up members. If he goes that route, ends up going to the left, doesn't find them. Maybe would have meant certain doom if you went to the right-hand side. Nation of Power sniffing that one out, backing off, getting themselves regrouped now. It's 89, 93% in climbing. If Tay goes down, this could be tough. They don't even get a chance at it. Some good body blocks from the rest of Sanguine and some kills coming out. And Sanguine's going to tie things up here 3-3. Three to three. Wow, big differences there. I think... Hello, Flame Effects. Pro probably a pretty wise call to, at this point, realize, listen, they are five clumped up people. A lot of them have resilience, so... Even if I get in there really deep, I'm probably not going to get outright kills, and these stuns aren't going to last long right. enough for me to follow up on this. And 
make a meaningful impact. I've already bought my team in the entire control of the point and the area surrounding it. Calls the King Bomb, King Bomb off early, just happy with the zoning that he got. Niu stays alive and goes on to have a, you know, market impact with his auto attacks. Bomb King, some of the strongest things he does is just left click, right click you down. And talk about the general turnaround from Sanguine. Mission of Power looked very firmly in control of this one. There's the assert dominance coming down from Tay. Is he able to find any kills, though? The utility, the maybe deal. not exactly what he wanted there. Instead, he gets a flame effects right in his face. But now, Edgem, he's going to get aggressive again. Only a little damage turns around, though. Oh, but the turnaround from Sanguine's been big on this map. It looked like Nation of Power was not only going to win the map, but tie up the series. And now, Sanguine have a minute and 10 seconds left to either, one, push through and end the set, or go to a, another point fight where they could again win and win the set. Mission of Power, they have to hold firm on defense if they want to extend the day. Hard thing about this is Stigma is just sitting up there on the balcony, plugging away dutifully at everybody that he can. Here comes the King Bomb, though. Almost full HP, big stun there, but the, the heal Brazil. comes right through. That Ash did not have a problem at all with that ult. Took a knee, took a breather, got right back in the fight. Flame effects, the only victim so far of this engagement. Sanguine's going to back off, realize they're not going to win this one 4v5. And we have 30 seconds left. Get a little regroup in. You know he's falling there is Neo. You got to be careful. Don't bite off more than you can chew here. One more sort of intermittent death in this one would spell doom, seemingly, for the Sanguine side. Poking around a little bit. Old strategy to pop those ultimates, especially ones like Immortal, which are just, man, they may not be up again this game. Those, it's a very slow charging ult. Fernando doesn't do a lot of damage. He has a short range, and he struggles to stay involved and, and keep a lot of uptime on the fights. Grumpy Bomb goes down. This one's not looking great for the offense. So lots of grouped up targets, though, and Neo's able to tee off onto that. The Dome Shield's going to get Tay down as well. Sanguine, what a big turnaround for them here on Ice Mines and a big turnaround for them on the day as well. They win game number four. Hats off to them. We'll take Nation to Power. That's a grown man play. That is just yeah. decisiveness. We spent every, uh, we spent a couple of big things, didn't work for us, put it all on red. They go down there, drop the dome <laughs> shield, and they get the front lines just close yeah. enough. And shout outs to Neo. He's plugging away there for good damage. He's not like, he's not missing and hitting those two 300s. Right. He was hitting like the 800 damage bombs there onto those front lines. Great shots. Just aerial dominance in that case. The Bomb King turning things around here for Sanguine. They find themselves the 3-1 win here today. Let's send it back to the desk to wrap the day. It was a very, very close to going to another round, but they close it out at the last second. It was like a King Bomb Immortal yeah. combo that didn't actually go through, and then it looks like, okay, well, this is where they're going to pause it. But like Nick said, then it's just like, well, we already spent some things on it, and they gave up a lot of room. Let's spend everything. Yeah, exactly. I mean, honestly, I think it was a, a decision in the moment. Uh, Jalen got really, really, really close with the card, right? He got almost all the way towards the capture without really getting shot. At that point, he's like, I bought so much space. Like, we we can we can do this. Go. Yeah. Like, then he popped there. I don't think he said that. I mean, he's pretty quiet from my experience with him. But <laughs> I think the Dome Shield went out, and then everybody was ready to move uh, <laughs> after that one. Well, Neo, surprisingly enough, he was 4, 8, and 10. And I'm going to go ahead and compare this to like a Na'Vi game where you know sometimes you don't have to have the pretty slash line. It just comes down to what effect did you have when it came to getting the point? And at the very end, that's where he was picking up a lot of that. But not the best Bomb King game. Between the two, it came down to Stigma versus Edgem. 12, 5, and 8 versus 11, 3, and 9. And Edgem being on the winning team means that he edges out technically on top he edges overall. Out. But, uh, is that intentional? Well, yeah, a little just bit. Edges just, out. A, just a little intentional. He played. He was playing really well, I thought, on the back line, just being able to... There were some times when he was just standing behind them in the middle of a like fight. This? They could, <laughs> Yeah, exactly, like this. And they wouldn't. We weren't able to turn to deal with them. They would decide instead to push forward and deal with Neo, hence his higher deaths. But they, uh, they just couldn't figure out how to deal with him. It was very solid overall from him. Again, a lot of a lot of angles from Cassie that, admittedly, some of them are exactly what you'd expect. This is pretty much on par with everything you would have seen out of a Cassie. But some of those, again, being behind someone or dealing with, again, some choice ults from the other side that might not have done exactly what Nation of Power had in their mind. 5.2 KDA, 161,000 damage. And the man was able to help turn things around. But that is Sanguine being able to take this in a 3-1 in total.
and push themselves forward now, seven and one in the standings, whereas six and two are going to be on the side of Nation Power. We're going to be able to look at those in just a second after we give Edgem his time in the limelight there as it comes through. A 17 map plus minus, the next highest is eight. So separating themselves pretty heavily now from Nation of Power as Bork go up the negative 10 to negative 15. Still close enough that one, you know, wrong set, one trip up could throw them down towards the bottom. But right now a solid third place, Sanguine a solid first place after that one. And of course, being able to look at what we've seen kind of throughout the day. North America, everything was pretty separated already. There was kind of a first, second, third, fourth. Europe was 13, 13, negative 13, negative 13. So nice to see that these two have separated a little bit more. 16, 10, negative 12, negative 14. And being able to come through, of course, perfectly mirrored in the set. 7, 1, 6, and 2, and then 2, and 6, 1, and 7. Blaze Gassars right now actually looked really good today. It just comes down to the fact that all business played a little better. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I think it's the splitting up now, like maybe they were evenly matched up moving forward, and then yeah. suddenly Grover Band, Imani available, Atlas available, suddenly now teams that are the teams that are adapting more are the teams that are pulling away. Meta shifts will absolutely change everything yeah. that we have seen, and it, has ha it happens in the Premier League all the way down to minor league, console league, even in just community tournaments, it will shake up what's going on. So it's been very good, but we can kind of look at what we saw for, or what we're going to see, sorry, for next week. Today we had a bunch of three and four and one and two matchups. Next week you're gonna have some opponents swapping across the way. Blazing Asars against Penta, Sour Team, and All Business, Sanguine versus Bork, and Zenith versus Nation of Power. And normally I would say my eyes are on Bork, how they're going to compare to Sanguine, but I also think just all of North America next week can be kind of tumultuous because I don't know where Zenith is gonna to compare to Nation of Power. Yeah, at least in the past, and this was before many, many roster changes. The before time. It's actually crazy how how much things have changed, but stayed the same. You know, <laughs> Ferocity on the top used to have you know stigma and poison, and yeah. now they're on the other team, but still manages to stay the same even with all those roster swaps and hop rounds. Well, they've been able to keep the right mentality, but I mean, that's the minor league for today. Thank you again to Kresnik. You joined us Thanks yesterday. You joined us today. So you've been able to get some casting reps in, some desk reps in. Now I'm sure you want to go get back to watching your team scram. And I think they're almost done. Oh, well, I, at this I, point, I think that's how long this has gone today. <laughs> they're going to be finished. We've saved you from some of the Portuguese yelling today. <laughs> from what I've heard behind the scenes, there's a lot of trying to figure it out. Either way, okay. it's going to be interesting. Tomorrow, though, is going to be Esports Weekly. It's going to be 1 p.m. as usual. I believe we have Cuss coming in for an interview. Of course, everyone coming in to talk about the console league, the minor league, and the premier league as normal. But that's going to do it for the minor league today. Thank you for tuning in. Remember, tune in tomorrow at 1. We'll have the premier league later. But until then, see you next time.